Hello and welcome everyone to Learn a Trade. Today I will be going over a repair and cleaning of a Turbo Chef oven. This is an Encore unit. As you can see, it's seen better days. <laughs> um, it's a lot of wear and tear on this unit, but um, this is a machine out of a 7-Eleven location that uh, wasn't able to be fixed on site. So I'm working on it in, uh, in the shop and just going over a few things that I'm finding. Um, there's a lot of cracks in the the door seal uh, that black door gasket has uh, a lot of cracks in it and um, and in the back here on the exhaust assembly as you can see it's it's blocked up it's it's completely blocked and we'll get into that a little more I'm gonna have to loosen that that build up I'm gonna have to loosen that up and then vacuum it out and clean the the complete assembly as you can see there the hole is completely blocked uh, that exhaust port it's completely blocked and the inner part of the assembly is blocked up too and the fans uh, the fan shrouds they they haven't been cleaned out in a while so those I'm going to clean those up some and work on it on the, the front area hasn't uh, around the door hasn't been cleaned very well and that this this side here is the side with the relays on it and the monitor switch is down there on on the right lower right side some of the wiring has been replaced already the transformers have already been replaced up top so I'm just going through and kinda taking a look at everything and uh, as you can see that door assembly is pretty bad the this is the cooking stone and you can see the the smooth surface has, has been worn away or, or or it's been scraped off so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to change that stone out also because that's that's going to affect the cooking quality of the uh, of the oven and here i'm just taking a look on the inside you can see there that right side glass the inner cook cavity glass is broken which more than likely caused the magnetron to arc within the waveguide and it's also going to have a contaminated waveguide because the glass is broken so all the grease and everything got in there and this is the magnetron that's on that right side and you can see it hasn't been cleaned in a while it's it's all filled with uh, dust and particles and during uh, the PMs those should basically be taken out uh, cleaned up and if they're if they're still good um, vacuum out all the dust uh, with a brush and with a vacuum but as you can see this one it's it's uh, got some damage to it um, some wear and tear so I'm gonna end up changing that magnetron and right here you see the waveguide on that right side that's where you can see the contamination inside of the waveguide there and there's some arc marks in there where the magnetron arced out so I'm gonna be replacing that waveguide also and this is the glass that was broken and that probably was the uh, cause of all of the issues that that machine was having now I've replaced the new glass so that's the the new waveguide glass in there then I'll be replacing the waveguide itself and the magnetron just want you to see the inside there there's the new waveguide in place
there's the new magnetron that I'm going to put in. I have my high limit switch on there. Always remember to take the high limit off of the old magnetron and put it on the new magnetron. And uh, don't forget to connect your wires. And this is the whole assembly complete. The high limit's connected, the magnetron's connected. I have the fan vent back on with the speaker. And now I'm ba back around the back side of that exhaust. So I had to loosen up the all the buildup inside of that tube. And I take my vacuum and then I just pull all of that all of that build up, pull it all out of there, all of that soot and grease build up. You know, and you want to use like a spring to remove to loosen it up and then use your vacuum to suck it out. And then you can see right now you can see all the way through there. Now that's you you're looking into the top heater area that's where the, that, that exhaust is all coming from and when it's blocked up like that the exhaust has nowhere to go so now I'm using my my brush just to clear out anything that that may be left on the sides of that tube clear that out and then you can see through there nicely so that's gonna have a better flow of exhaust into the water pan that's down below and you want to let those tubes the exhaust tube right here you want to let those sit and soak while you're doing all that and you see all the stuff coming out of there it was a lot more but um, I just wanted you to see how I clean them out you know if you don't have if you don't carry the parts to replace that tube assembly it's best to go ahead and spray it down with the Turbo Chef cleaner and then let it sit while you're working on the rest of the stuff and then use your brush to get in there uh, to get in both sides of it and loosen up anything that may be stuck to the sides of the tube and you just want to make sure you rinse it through real good to be sure you you got everything out of there and that way you know you're going to have a good f exhaust flow uh, coming out once you put it, once you reassemble the unit. So right here it's cleaned up. Just going to uh, dry it off, put a new seal on there, which you'll see in a few minutes. That's the intersection of the exhaust assembly. Just putting that back in place now that I got that cleaned up as best as possible and it's a lot better than it was. And like I said, these units, this is an Encore unit. It's an older unit and um, the customer is not going to replace these machines right now. Right now they're in some type of a money crunch, so we have to rebuild them and you know recondition them and this is the new the tube that I cleaned out as you can see I put the new seal on there that white seal around the edges you want to use the seal to make sure you have a good solid uh, connection where there's no no leakage that's coming through through there I mean these get up to 500 degrees so after a while they will um, that seal becomes brittle so that's why it's important when you do the PMs on these that you turn you know you turn these so that you can get to the back of that exhaust area remove that exhaust tube it's gonna be blocked up or pretty much clogged up but if you clean it up good the first few times uh, it becomes easier and easier to clean it every time you know but when it's just sitting and it never gets PM'd or it never gets cleaned then then it's a little more difficult to clean those out Right now I'm just reassembling that exhaust tube assembly, getting all the screws in place.
yeah, I have a little little trouble getting everything in place. I'm kind of doing this one-handed because I wanted to hold the camera so you could kind of see what I'm doing a little better. Um, but I'm getting those screws back in place and and then I'll I'll get back around the uh, around the front and uh, kind of set up some more stuff inside the cook cavity. And don't forget your bottom screws on that um, exhaust tube. You want to get those bottom screws on there so that um, that exhaust tube doesn't get pushed out of place when a customer puts the water pan in or if there's another service tech working in there and they have to uh, put that, pull the pan out and put the pan back on. Sometimes it'll get knocked out of place. And most times you want to be sure to get all of your screws in. I know sometimes technicians have a habit of taking screws out of panels and not putting them back in because it's easier to just pull the panel off. But it's always best to put all of the screws back in. I can understand about like some of the slurpy machines and stuff like that. You have those rear screws on the side panels that that's okay to like leave those off because it makes it easier to pull it off once you get the front screws off. But for the most part, you want to make sure you get everything back on. See that line right there? That's the modem line, modem, modem cable. I'm going to pull that out of the uh, circuit board just so I can reposition it because I don't, I'd rather not have it like sitting right in front of the uh, waveguide like that. I'd rather have it secured the the way it comes from the manufacturer. So, and then I'm just going to put that cable back into the port on the um, circuit board. Yeah, so if you're a technician and you're working with, uh, you do any work for 7-Eleven or anything like that, um, this is a good video just to, I just wanted to show you all that, you know, these are the older units, you're going to, you're going to be, if you're doing that 7-Eleven work, you're going to see a lot more uh, work as far as cleaning these and um, getting them back up and running because Right now, 7-Eleven is not spending money on replacing these older machines. They rather have them fixed. See right there, that that black dust in the back there? That's that buildup that I had pushed out with my brush. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and take your vacuum once you got everything cleaned up and then just vacuum up under that catalytic converter area. You want to you wanna, uh, vacuum that all up get it all out of there and you know just you want to try to get the the cook cavity as clean as you can so I'm just you know vacuuming up the you know the dust and stuff like that that may have fell when I cleaned out the the uh, exhaust area and that lower heater I'm lifting that up right now and that lower heater you want to just check to make sure that those little legs that are underneath that heater those keep that heater from touching the base of the machine because after a while that heater it kind of the material wears away and then the heater ends up shorting out against the base of the machine so those those metal spacers kind of give it some space between the bottom of the machine and the heater so you want to just make sure that those spacers are are still good, that they're not um, broken or anything. Sometimes the welds break on them. So now you can see the front where I have cleaned up the, the door area. That's the new cooking stone that I put in there. It's a, it's a used cooking stone, but it's in better condition than the one that was in there. So I'm going to end up putting that back into back into that oven and right here I'm putting on my my base plate 
this is the base plate that the uh, the, f the food gets c cooked on and you want to put that in the the back going in first and then it just sits right down in there and now I'm putting on my uh, bracket this is the bracket that holds down that that uh, base plate and the cooking stone sits on top of that bracket it's like a uh, stainless steel uh, cooking bracket but it has two hooks on the on the bottom of the front end and then it has two prongs in the back so you wanna set the front end in first and then pull it back towards the back and then those hooks are gonna sit right in and then it's gonna it's gonna sit down solid on top of that base plate and and the hooks help hold that base plate firmly inside the cook cavity and then you can sit your cooking stone on top of that bracket now I'm placing my cooking stone on top of the bracket that that's uh, holding in the base plate Now just doing a final wipe down of the front uh, front door area. And you can see a lot of the wear and tear on the front of that door. Um, all right now I'm putting it back into operation, letting it warm up. It's about at 82, 83 degrees right now. So I'm going to let that warm up and then once it gets up to temp, then we'll be able to cook. Right now you see that uh, timer, it's a seven, uh, eight minute timer. When the oven reaches 500 degrees, it'll go into a cook down mode, okay, a cook in mode. And right now it's cooking in eight mi for eight minutes and then it'll be ready to go, it'll be ready to operate. Right there I'm just showing you that the wear and tear on that front panel that's from all of the steam that is escaping through those cracks in the uh, in the door but that's just something that happens and over time with these units being so old that's what happens see right now our timer is I looks like that's down to like uh, two minutes now so it's still cooking in and when it's doing that cooking what it's doing is it's allowing that stone to get to the same temperature as the inside of the cook cavity so you want to make sure that you remember to put that cooking stone inside before you allow the oven to heat up because if you don't uh, as soon as the customer cooks something it's not going to it's not going to cook properly so you want to make sure you have that cooking done and right now I'm gonna do a test and instead of using food I use a wet rag you want to wet the rag and you want to put it on the tray just like you're cooking some food and this way it gives the oven a load so it's like there's a load inside the oven and um, I usually do like a pizza I'll cook cook it let it go through a complete cook cycle of a pizza and if there are any issues that that may happen it's going to happen when you're doing a cook cycle so you want to try to do cook cycles right now I'm just checking the vents to make sure I have an airflow coming out of those those vent ports that's telling me that those fans are running and I'm gonna to go to the rear and you can see those are the fans the two end fans are those two vent fans for the magnetrons that center fan is for the electrical compartment to keep the the heat down in that electrical compartment so you always wanna you know check your fans especially if you're running into an issue right now I'm putting in the air filter 
you want to make sure those are cleaned out as best as possible and um, let them dry out and then put them put them back in place once you have the oven ready right now it just finished that cook cycle I'm pulling out the the rag that I put in there you can see it's heated up nicely there's no error codes there's no error messages and this unit is ready to go um, hopefully this helps you all I thank you all for watching take care and stay blessed